Hi divers, this is Alec Pierce from Scuba 2000 with another tech tip. Now, I got my serious face on today because this is a serious topic. I'm serious. This is probably the most important tech tip you're going to hear from me. And the reason it's the most important tech tip, the reason I think that is because I service regulators all day long. Take a quick look here, Kev. All these rigs had to be done in the next half a dozen days. Divers are going off, heading off to pick them up. This is what we do here. What I do all day long, I service regulators. I see all kinds of them coming in. Makes, models, most of them are nice and clean on the outside. And I open them up and they're garbage on the inside and the owner gets upset because it costs two or three hundred dollars for parts and service and everything else to fix a regular that hasn't been properly rinsed and taken care of. So this tech tip is about how to rinse your regulator properly so you don't ever have to come and see Alec Pierce or your local dive store. And this is not in the book. Remember I told you all along these are things that are not in the book. They really aren't. Let me show you one thing right off the bat. Earlier on, one of my early tech tips, we talked about dust caps. And I mentioned that dust caps today, for some reason, some of the manufacturers have changed their dust caps and have made them crazy. These dust caps are supposed to keep water out. Look at this dust cap. It holds a quarter of an ounce of dirty seawater. And you're going to, you know, I know you're supposed to clean that out, but it's hard to do. And then you put that in there and you get one drop of seawater down in that little filter down in there. You're going to be coming to see me. Bring some money. It's just crazy. Here's another one here. Look at this dust cap. This is from a big major manufacturer, which I don't need to mention. But look at it. Nice, nice looking dust cap. But again, great big hole down there. So I always recommend divers, get rid of those. Get rid of those. Spend $5 and get yourself a real dust cap. Look at this thing. Good, solid, heavy rubber. You put that in, screw it down tightly. It seals. No water is going to get in there. So right off the bat, I have a bit of a beef with dust caps. However, assuming you've solved that problem, and now it's the end of the dive, actually it's the end of the week. You don't need to do this complete rinse I'm going to show you after every dive. You want to rinse it quickly. Just dip it down in the rinse tank, give it a shake, make sure it's all cleaned out after every dive. But at the end of the week, when you're going to dry and pack your gear, and then take it home, right? And like most divers, you're going to put it away until next year or for a few months it's going to sit there and anything that's on it is going to corrode and work away at it that's when you have to do a proper rinse let me show you what you should do first of course dust caps dry put the dust cap in place and put the dust cap solidly down where it should be you don't have to crank this thing on by the way sometimes i can hardly get these knobs undone just turn it down snugly like that so the dust cap's good in front okay there's the regular how do you rinse it properly well first of all you can't rinse it properly. At the end of the week, it's had salt water on it and it's dried off and on. It has sand on it. You can't rinse that stuff off. It takes time for salt to dissolve and come off the product. So the only way to take care of your regular property is to get a sink full of water, a tank or, or, or you know what I've done in the past in the hotel room? I have actually plugged the shower hole the shower drain and with, with paper towel or something and filled it as much as I can with water and and then I put the regular down there to soak and you put the reg in see that completely immersed in water and let it soak leave it in there shake the second stages get the bubbles out of them and then leave it in there for a half an hour go and have a rum and coke or whatever it is you like to like to drink go down and catch some rays and so on and come back about a half an hour later now you're ready to rinse the regulator properly. So what do you do exactly? Well, I'll take the regulator out of there. First of all, hold it up above the water, let it drip off a little bit. Now, while you still have the water there, the second stage, take the second stage, and if you go like this, forcibly, water goes in through the mouthpiece and comes out through the exhaust. You see that? In the mouth, out the exhaust. So it's going right through that second stage. That's great. And of course, the octopus, same thing. In through the mouthpiece, out through the exhaust, just like that. Look at that. That's great. What else should you do? Well, you have the water handy. Well, look, these regulators all have nice hose protectors, aren't they pretty? And they trap seawater underneath them. And this gets all corroded, has to be replaced. These hoses are $65 a piece. So take this hose protector, pull it back, rinse it, twist this back and forth because salt water gets into that swivel joint, twist it back and forth in the water, move that back and forth. Same on the first day. Look at this one. This is a $125 swivel, just that little joint there. Uncover it, rinse out the hose protector, get the salt and sand out of there, twist the joint all around like so. Okay, that's all good. Now this is a fancy regulator. This is one of those new Cressy or Oceanic Zeos. Really a nice regulator. And so of course it has adjustable second stage and a Venturi. It has two knobs on it. They have O-rings and they're exposed to seawater too. Under the water, turn that knob back and forth. Flip that lever back and forth three or four times. Get all that seawater and all that sand out of there. Okay? And hey, what about this? I get this all the time. 
People come in, the buttons on my computer don't work anymore. How come they're sticky? Well, that's because you didn't rinse them. So while it's down the water, push the buttons two or three times each time. So now a nice clean water goes down the shaft and cleans out the O-ring, cleans out the salt water. You can't hurt the computer. Push the buttons two or three times and bring it all out. Just like that. Now, pick the whole thing up, let it drain. You wiggle all the knobs, all the controls, pushed all the buttons. You rinsed off all the hose protectors. Now you've got a well-rinsed regulator. Hang it up to dry just the way it is. And in a few hours, it'll be completely dry. Coil it up nice and neatly in a little bag. It was completely in a, in a little circle, I guess. It was completely dry. And, and tuck it away. And you're all set to go. Okay. Hose protectors, both ends of the hoses. Pull them back, rinse them off. Computer buttons, push them in and out several times. Regulator controls, adjustable controls, or venturi, move them back and forth. All this while it's in the water. Rinse up the second stage really well. Be sure the dust cap is in place. Be sure it's a good dust cap, and I'll never see you for service anyway. I hope I do see you at Scuba 2000 sometime. I hope there's been some ideas there. I wanted to add, by the way, some of you have been sending us some great comments. Most of the comments are going to read complimentary. Some of them have suggestions of their own. Some guys aren't exactly crazy about what I say. I've never said I'm perfect. If you get an idea from me, I'm happy. If you don't like my ideas, there's lots of other things on YouTube to look at, but that'd be a shame. Something more good will come along eventually. So keep watching. Alec Pierce, Scuba 2000. Tech Tips.